Edmund Gray is registered at the Valley Inn. Uh, Brooke, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. So now you've betrayed him. Are you happy? I haven't. Edmund hurt your feelings, so you tattled on him. Look, I'm accustomed to telling the truth. You are also accustomed to living without a man. Is that a custom you want to continue? What, I'm going to have to lie in order to keep a man? You're going to have to stay flexible to keep a man worth oh. having. This from Ms. Flexible, 1992. Maybe you haven't noticed, Brooke, but I've grown a good deal in the last few years. I would say more in the last few weeks since Edmund hypnotized you. You know, I have to deal with the love law on a daily basis, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's been a help to me. It's a pity that you don't have to answer one or two of those desperate letters. Oh, really? Well, what do you think it would do for me? Maybe it might give you a little respect for true love. Or maybe it might even help you uh, recognize it when you see it. And maybe if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have lost Charles to that Tadi Mona Kane. Now, there's one thing for certain. You cannot turn back time. So you, young lady, had better think very hard before you simply throw the whole thing out. is taken. I mean, maybe your public has taught you something. <clears throat> Living things grow, Brooke. Some even grow wiser. Will you do me a favor? Gladly. Uh, will you stay here a little while longer and look after Jamie? Are you going to go see Edmund? Yeah. I'll stay as long as you like. Thank you. Uh, and Brooke? Yeah. When you get there. Yes. Don't be a jerk. Oh, well, well, well. It's true. You're back. Good old Dimitri. Still with an iron grip on the obvious. G grip this, all right? You stay away from Angelique or you will be sorrier than you have ever been in your life. You don't know a damn thing about my life. So save the orders for the service. That was a stupid move, Edmund. If you don't stay away from Angelique, I'll make you sorrier than you have ever been in your life. You don't know a damn thing about my life. So save the orders for the servants. That was a stupid move, Edmund. You know, I should shut that smart mouth of yours with my fist, but since I'm the same basic pacifist I've always been... Pacifist? I'll let you slink right back out of town again. You'll let me? Yeah, yeah. But you'd better do it fast, because if you ever get near Angelique again, I'm gonna have your sorry hide thrown in jail. Your concern for your wife is overwhelming. She falls down the stairs. She gets rushed to the hospital. What do you do? You come over here and you start issuing orders? Yeah, yeah, better yet. Why don't, you, why don't you get out of town? No, get out of the state before next week, Gresham. You understand me? Is that a royal pronouncement, sire? The Lord and Master speaks. The serf tugs his forelock and scurries to obey. You got seven days. Seven days, huh? Well, let me tell you something, Dimitri. I'm emancipated. That crest you had branded on my chest, it's no longer there. So you can take your royal pronouncements and shove them. Oh, you lousy... Go ahead. Come on. You... Try it. I've been waiting to fight you for 20 years.
have company. The plot thickens. Hello, ladies. Miss Kane, very nice to see you again. Angelique asked me to come. And Brooke? I know who you are. You're the reporter who came to see me at Enchantment. Edmund Gray. Well, that's the name that he uses now. But I remember him with a, a different name. Right, Brooke? And Miss English was asking questions about you earlier. You don't say. How very kind of you to give him my address. Well, you wouldn't have uh, told me it, would you? No, 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 not you. You skulked into town, trespassed on my property, harassed my uh, family behind my back. Is there some obscure local law against entering Pine Valley without his See, permission? as usual, you didn't have the guts to face me. No, no, you made my wife cover for you again. No, I would have faced you. I would have loved to have faced you. But you're never there. Look, hold on. Could you just hold it? Could we all hold on here for one moment, please? Why are you here? Are you and this man... Are you and this man... Uh, Brooke is here to observe firsthand the results of her snooping. Oh, wait a minute. I saw you with him at Brian's trial. Brian's trial? How long have you been here? Well, he was interviewing me about the murder over a month ago, but mainly he was asking me questions about you. Wait a minute. You... You have been sneaking around this town for a month? You two go way back. Yeah, which is why he wants to get rid of me. You see, I know Dimitri Merrick, the real Merrick. The sadistic young master of wild wind. Oh, you don't know anything. The enigma of two continents. Oh, you self-righteous, smug piece of... Please calm down. Please, can't you discuss whatever this problem is in a civilized adult way? Angelique asked you to come here. Yes, she did, because she was worried. And she should be. And so should you, if you don't mind my saying so. Edmund, we, fighting we is we not going to accomplish anything. You saying so. That is tough. Because I'll tell you, you have all the markings of being the next notch on his bedpost. You think you're hot, don't you? Huh? But you haven't changed. You still got that same chip on your shoulder. You still got that same smart mouth. You're the same person you have always been. You're a thief. Nothing else. Did you know that your uh, esteemed fellow journalist was nothing more than a slick rip-off artist? I would watch my step with this guy if I were you. He stole ten thousand dollars. He's an my elitist mind. pig. Ten with no principles. Thousand dollars. He is still not changed. He ran off with the money. Look at him. He still plays Lord of the Manor. You workers of the world unite. Rise up against your oppressor. Steal every cent that you can. You know we were peons, beneath his notice until one day he came back from Oxford and rediscovered Angelique. All grown up. You see, you see, the, the rich are evil and the poor are noble and pure. Angelique, the maid servant, perfect, docile, adoring, the perfect wife. And groomed by Helga like a Marrick mare, a piece of horse flesh. Oh, your sneering moral superiority. He was jealous. Yes, and Angelique, sweet Angelique, she was just grateful to be chosen. You don't know what you're talking about. You stole $10,000? Until one day she went riding and fell off a horse. Suffered massive head injuries, went into a coma. And what did you do? You shipped her off to Austria to some clinic and announced to the world that she was dead. Yeah, I don't have to justify anything to you. But then, a miracle happened. And she woke up. But that was kind of inconvenient for you, wasn't it? But then, hey, what's money for, right? You just hire a nurse to take care of her. Edmund. Hirelings make things a lot easier to pursue. Right, Miss Kane? Oh, no, this is between you and Dimitri. Yes, and I've had enough. Just tell me, what was he doing with you in the office when Angelique fell down the stairs? Was he groping positions? I said enough. Was he stroking his capital gains? You didn't answer her question. You're not going to get a straight answer out of him. Miss Kane, how does it feel to be the replacement for the blonde that he found in the well? Edmund, for heaven's sakes, what are you trying to prove? The point is... He doesn't take a lot of time to get over the relationships he has with women because he doesn't have relationships. He has possessions. This man vanished over 20 years ago with my father's money, yet he can stand here and judge me. He's kept up with you. Oh, and who wouldn't? The Marricks of Wildwind, America's colorful aristocracy. I mean, my mother worshipped at your shrine. Your mother was a kind and gentle woman. My mother scrubbed your floors and did your dirty work, and my father slaved in your garden. They were two very loyal, hard-working retainers. Yes, and they did not deserve you. My mother had calluses on both her hands, and she had arthritis in both knees, but she got down on those knees, and she polished your marble floors until they gleamed. Until she died. She had the life pummeled out of her. But no, 
She never gave up the faith in the Merritt benevolence. She swore they would provide. Yes, and we would have provided if you hadn't been such yeah, a damn and hothead. Groveled and kissed your master's feet. No, you called my father a, a filthy imperialist dog. Your father was worse than a filthy imperialist dog. That greedy anti-labor war profiteer, he should have been executed. You see, you see what I'm talking about? My mother, my mother, she still thought that he was our savior. You know what all she wanted for her son? was an education. And instead, she got nothing. Nothing but an early grave for a lifetime of service. You bet I called your old man a dog. And you stole the money. Yeah. Yeah, after the fight, I, um, I left. And then one night, I woke up real early when it was still dark. Yeah, and you dipped your hand right into that door drawer and you took the cash. Huh? Oh, that's, that's fine. Who cares? But who did you leave holding the bag? Angelique. You see, uh, you see, Edmund, you're, you're not only a common thief. You're a sniveling coward as well. Angelique took the blame. My father was about to give your name to the police when Angelique made the announcement that she had taken the money and used it to make an anonymous contribution to a worthy cause. No, 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 no you're lying. Why would he lie? You, you, you never even asked her? I thought she was dead until February. You have been in this town over a month. You have trespassed on my property visiting her. And it, ne it never came into your mind even to bring up the subject of the money. I, I don't know. I, I thought it was over and done with. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. You just left the mess behind, right? So for somebody to clean up, somebody like your mother, except she, except she had died. So, so Angelique took over. Dimitri. He uses women to cover for him. That's his pattern. Listen, can we just stop all of this? Can we, please? $10,000 plus interest. Take it and get out. <laughs> this is your final warning. You stay the hell away from Angelique. Oh, yeah? And who's going to take care of her if I do? You? You've obviously got other things on your mind. Is this necessary? If I see your face anywhere around Wildwind again, I'll have you thrown in jail. I'm going to stick around Wildwind as long as I care to. All right? Until Angelique is absolutely recovered. Dimitri, look, uh, Edmund has asked you to leave. That's my final warning. Please. your story. Edmund. Now, if you don't mind, I like my goodbye short and sweet. <laughs>